Bill O'Reilly here, Thursday, April 14th, 2022. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening across our nation. President Biden's approval rating once again plummets. COVID deaths fall to the lowest level since the outbreak began. Crime getting worse in New York City. Flyers rank the worst airports in America. Also ahead, it is Holy Week. Do you care? But first, Joe Biden's approval rating plunging to an all-time low. New survey from Quinnipiac finding just 33% now approve of Biden's performance in office. 54% disapprove. That's a 20% gap. A similar survey from CNBC says 38% support Mr. Biden. At the same time, in his presidency, Donald Trump's approval rating was 39%. Barack Obama, 48%, 75% for Bush the Younger in the aftermath of 9-11. The number of COVID fatalities falling to the lowest level since the outbreak began two years ago. The global average now stands at 3,000 deaths each day, the least since March 2020. At its height, the worldwide pandemic killed 15,000 people every 24 hours. 75 countries have vaccinated fewer than 40% of their population, 21% less than 10%. That's a lot of percents, but the vax has not spread to the third world as much as to the modern nations. At least 30 people shot in New York City so far this week after a gunman felled 10 victims in the subway, none of them dead. That's a miracle. Mayor Eric Adams promising to beef up the police to stop the chaos. That promise has been made, what, about 85 times before? Since Adams took office January 1st, shootings up 20%, assaults 35%, robberies 25%, car theft 33%. Wow. Violent crime in the New York City subway, up 50% in the last four months. You think there's anarchy down there? I believe there is. Polls show two-thirds of New Yorkers are thinking about leaving the city. New survey from Frequent Flyer ranks the worst airports in the nation. Here they are. O'Hare in Chicago, Logan in Boston, San Francisco, New York's LaGuardia, And the most unpleasant place for air travelers, Newark International. 33% of all flights at Newark are delayed or canceled. In a moment, how much do you know about Jesus as Easter approaches? Right back. A criminal found the title to my friend's home online, forged his name, replaced him as a new owner on the title. That is called home title theft. And my friend spent a lot of money trying to get his title back. Real estate crimes and losses are not rare. According to the FBI, this crime is growing faster than credit card fraud, if you can believe it. And you're not covered by homeowner's insurance or common identity theft programs. Home Title Lock has earned my trust. They put a barrier around your home's title, instantly detect anyone tampering with your home's title, and mobilize to help shut it down. Here's what I urge you to do. Please go to HomeTitleLock.com. Read the testimonials from government officials. Register your home address to see if you're already a victim and you don't know it. And when you protect your home, tell them O'Reilly sent you to get my listener discount. HomeTitleLock.com. HomeTitleLock.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. It is Holy Week around the world. Today is Holy Thursday. Tomorrow, Good Friday. Then on Sunday, of course, Easter. Now, according to data from Pew Research and the United Nations, there are 2.4 billion Christians in the world right now. That is 31% of the Earth's population. Islam, 25% of the world's population. No religion at all, 15%. Hinduism, 14%. Judaism, 14 million people. That's less than 1%. Now, the most Christian countries in the world are Greece, Romania, Grenada, the island in the Caribbean, Haiti, and Poland. As far as raw numbers are concerned, these are the countries that have the most Christians. The USA, 250 million. Brazil, Mexico, Russia, that's Orthodox Christian, 
and the Philippines. One of my biggest selling books is Killing Jesus. There is no religion in it at all. It is all about Jesus the Nazarene, a real person. We did some amazing research. There were two threads, the Jewish thread and the Roman thread. And those records still exist about Jesus. Why? Because he attracted so much attention in the two years that he spoke publicly that both the Jewish authorities and the Roman authorities sent spies to track him. And those spies sent back written records. Now, Jesus of Nazareth, which was a backwater, a very small town, was a stone cutter, not a carpenter. Why? Well, there were no trees in Judea. People lived in stone dwellings. He preached for just two years. At first, few listened. He had a few guys with him, but that was about it. Then the crowds grew. And as thousands started to show up, the authorities got nervous. Now, why did thousands of people show up to see a stone cutter? They couldn't hear him. There were no microphones. Yes, they could see Jesus. He was in elevated positions and on the water in a boat on the Sea of Galilee, but they could not hear what he was saying. So, logically, why? are thousands of people following him around in a time when you had to work every day to eat. It had to be the works. In the Bible, they are referred to as miracles. We do not have them in killing Jesus, but there are accounts written by the spies that were sent back to the Jewish temple authorities and to Pontius Pilate. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, there was almost a riot of adulation, and that sealed his doom. The Sanhedrin and the temple wanted him dead, and ultimately Pilate signed off on it because he didn't want a revolution. Jesus is the most famous man the world has ever seen, a stonecutter. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve that message by writing it. If you'd like more honest news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com. In a moment, something you might not know. As you know, inflation is almost out of control thanks to the policies of this administration. Retirement accounts are especially vulnerable right now. Because when inflation goes up, your dollar savings go down. So how do you protect your hard-earned wealth? Please call the people I trust at American Hartford Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts against inflation by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver, and they make it easy. They are the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. All it takes is a quick call, and they will deliver physical gold and silver right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them O'Reilly sent you and they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. 877-444-GOLD-GOLD. Or text GOLD to 65532. Again, 877-444-GOLD or text GOLD to 65532. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. 247 years ago today, the first society dedicated to the abolishment of slavery, was established in North America. The group demanded the release of captive Africans throughout the Western Hemisphere. Here is the story. On April 14, 1775, residents in Philadelphia formed the Society for the Relief of Free Negroes Unlawfully Held in Bondage. That was the name of the crew. The group not only advocated for an end to slavery but also for the integration of blacks into American life, including the right to vote. At the time, the country's founding fathers were split on the issue. Abolitionists included Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Alexander Hamilton. Others actively engaged in slavery. Thomas Jefferson owned 600 blacks at his plantation in Virginia. Between the Revolution and the Civil War, 
the abolitionist movement bitterly divided the young republic, as hundreds of anti-slave groups formed in the North and some in the South. Prior to 1865, the end of the Civil War, 12 American presidents owned people as property, including George Washington, Jefferson, and Andrew Jackson. Now, some politicians claim the institution was necessary. Slavery was necessary. In 1830, Vice President John Calhoun described enslaved Americans as, quote, positive good for the country. Calhoun, of course, was a villain. Slavery ultimately ended with Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. In 1862, the president said, quote, all persons held as slaves within any state shall be then, thenceforth, and forever free, unquote. By the end of the Civil War, four million black people were liberated, mostly in the South. The subsequent ratification of the 13th, 14th, and then 15th Amendments banned individual states from disenfranchising any American based on skin color. And here's something else you might not know. The original abolitionist organization we mentioned that was formed back in 1775 still operates. The group is now known as the Pennsylvania Abolition Society. They currently give grants to those promoting equality in America. Back after this. Supply chain issues have been a catalyst to bring high-tech manufacturing back to the USA. My tech guy, the founder of Brownstone Research, calls it the great recalibration and discusses it in his new newsletter, Near Future Report. For 35 years, Jeff Brown has helped his subscribers safely navigate volatile times to preserve and grow wealth. He also answers your most pressing questions like how to protect your retirement from inflation. What are the implications of a new digital currency and the Great Reset? What will the Fed do with interest rates? And what's going to happen in the stock market this year? Brownstone Research has been at the forefront of major market moves for 35 years. Let Jeff help you by signing up for his newsletter today at a 75% discount. A 12-month subscription, only $49. So please go to jeffbrowntech.com. JeffBrownTech.com, JeffBrownTech.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.